Welcome everybody to The Grace Company. In this video, I'm gonna show you some simple uses for Pattern CAD, even if you aren't designing anything from scratch. So I'm going to show you how I took a design that I purchased online and made some simple changes that will help the designs work better for my quilt. I'm gonna be using a laptop to edit this pattern in. You can download QCT5 on three separate devices. So you can have it downloaded on a tablet that you use with the machine, and you can um, have it downloaded on a, a separate laptop or computer that you can use in simulation mode. So I have QCT loaded up here, and I'm gonna show you how to find a help file on how to download a design from online and use it in QCT. So I have QCT open in simulation mode. Up at the top here, you can see it says help. I'm gonna click on that. The file that we're looking for is plugins batch import. So this is gonna show us how to import the files. This next page here gives us a list of different places that you can purchase designs from. And it also tells you what file types you can download. And it recommends that we use QLI or CQP. I purchased my design from Ann and Bright Designs. This is the design I chose. It's called Enzyme 4 Block. Here we can choose what file type. I chose QCP. I purchased this earlier and downloaded it. So I can find the file in my downloads folder. If I open up my files and find the downloads file, you can see right here, Enzyme 4 block C. So the help file shows you how to download a design. And next it's going to show you that you need to extract these the files from the zip file. Okay. So going back to a, my explorer, okay. I'm going to right click and click extract all. I'm gonna choose to down, place this directly into um, my QCT5 program files. Okay. So I can click browse and I'm gonna find the C file and find the file powered by QuiltCAD. This is where all of the files for QCT5 are found. We're looking for the patterns file. Okay. And I'm gonna put this in a file that I made earlier called My Purchased Patterns. Okay. So I'm gonna click Select Folder okay. and click Extract. Now you can see that there is a CQP file and this image file here that helps uh, the program know what your design looks like. The next few pages in the help file are gonna show us how to move our design to a USB thumb drive. I wanna keep the design on my computer. So I'm gonna skip those pages and um, find the instructions on how to open your designs. I'm gonna skip those pages and go to the pages about importing the designs into QCT5. So now we're on page 19 and it says that we can open and import these designs in several different places. We can use Select and Sew, Pantograph, Pattern CAD or Quilt CAD. Since we're going to be using Pattern CAD, we're going to import it in to Pattern CAD. Okay. We just need to find the plugins folder and the batch import options. So back in QCT5, we can click Pattern CAD. Up in the corner here, we have plugins and batch import. Now we need to find the file where we extracted our designs to. It's in the patterns folder and in my purchased patterns. So we can select this design and click import. We have a pop-up here that says that the batch import process is complete. So we can click OK. And this is the only pattern that we want to download, so we can click no. PatternCAD has tried to open this design automatically, 
but as you can see, it's way too small to work with. Let's try clearing this pattern and placing the design again, but this time we'll place it a little bit differently. Up at the top, there is a big red X that you can click and that'll clear the pattern. This notification will appear and this is letting us know that PatternCAD wants to be careful with copyrighted information. So clearing this design will clear everything. That's okay, so we'll click yes. And then back up at the top in the left hand corner, there are two options for opening this design, auto center and as is. PatternCAD tried to open this pattern as is, but it was the wrong size. So let's try auto center and PatternCAD will automatically resize this design to fit onto the screen. So we need to find our file. If we were to go to um, our patterns, we could find the CQP file, but we need to find the file that we imported. Okay. So we're going to find that in the batch import file. And you can see I've got a bunch of different purchased patterns. And here's our design, the Enzyme 4 block. We can click open. So you can see here our pattern has opened and there are a bunch of these red circles overlapping all over our lines. Those red circles are called nodes. You can hide the nodes so you can just see the design by clicking this button in the corner here. In order to edit this pattern, we're going to need to see the nodes. Today, we are going to work just in the edit menu of PatternCAD. So there's a lot of different options that PatternCAD has for you to use, and I'm often using the draw options, but today we're just going to use the edit options. So I'm going to walk through a bunch of these different options. We can view some of these nodes a little bit better if we zoom in and zoom out. So I want to zoom in here. All of these circles are actually connecting different lines. So if you pull on them when you're in the edit menu, they can stretch out and you can see that each of these lines has two red circles or nodes on each end. And you can edit them in a lot of different ways. If you want to undo something, you can always tap these undo buttons on the side here. And we can go back to this curving line here. If you just want to select a section of nodes, you can cl click and drag a pink box over any nodes that you want to um, adjust. And you can drag all of the nodes that you have selected at one time. We'll undo that. Over on the edit panel, we have some options. We have select all. If we zoom out, you can see that all of the nodes have now been selected. That means we could move this entire design anywhere we want. Okay. We'll undo that. Okay. Then we can unselect all. And if you just have a section selected, you can click select inverse to select all of the other nodes and switch which ones are selected. Okay. Let's click unselect all. Next, I want to show you how to flip your design. So you can click select all and you can click flip vertical and flip horizontal. For this design, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but um, depending on what design you have, it um, could be useful to have a mirror image of the design that you want. Zoom out a little bit. Let's try resizing our design. So you can see our design is on a grid. And with this grid, each of the bigger squares are one inch. So if you want to make sure that your pattern is a specific size, you can adjust the size of this pattern to fit the grid. In order to do that, I want 
to hide these nodes so that we can't see them. So all that we see is the lines of the design. Let's try stretching this. Even though you can't see the nodes, they are selected and we need to change our step size because right now it is really tiny. We're going to change this to small increments so that we change it by small amounts. We also want to make sure that the lock icon is locked so that it doesn't stretch out the design. The vertical and the horizontal sides stay the same. So now when I tap resize to make the design bigger, you can see it changes. Let's zoom in to this corner and see if it fits up. You can use the sidebars to move left and right and up and down when it's zoomed in. Let's change this back to tiny so we can make some really tiny adjustments and get it exactly this to the edge of this. So we have a design that is exactly six by six. Let's view our nodes again and see they're still selected. Next, I want to rotate my design and I'm going to save this so that I have an on point design that can fit on my quilt. So I can click rotate and you can see I've got um, different increments that I can rotate this design with. I can do it one degree, five degrees, 15 degrees, or 45 degrees. Right now they are turning counterclockwise. You can click the reverse button to turn it clockwise. So we're just going to turn this 45 degrees. So now we have an on point design that I can use on my quilt. I'm going to save this pattern, click file, save pattern. And I'm going to make a file to keep all of my new designs in. So I'm going to click new and use my keyboard to name this. Okay. I'm going to move this enzyme four block into here so I can click cut and paste. And then go ahead and name this file. I'm going to name it Enzyme for um, on point. So now that I've saved this on point design, I'm going to make a triangle design that can go on the edges of my quilt that has some triangles and some on point squares. In order to adjust this pattern the way I want it, I want to have this design in the background of pattern CAD so that I can make sure that the lines um, line up to the original design. Pattern CAD has an option for that. It has two different layers that you can swap between. And if you put something in the back layer, you can make edits on the top layer and the top layer is all that will be saved. Over on the sidebar here, I'm going to go under layers, swap, and you can see our design has turned blue. That means it's on a bottom layer and we can no longer see the nodes at all and we can't edit this pattern at all. So we're gonna open this design again onto the top layer so that we can make some edits um, and adjust it to this design. Okay. So we can file, open, and we're going to open as is this time since we want it to uh, um, open the same way that we just saved it. So we can find our on point design, open it, and now this layer is right on top. Okay. To make our triangle design, I'm just going to delete half of the nodes on this side. 
But I also need to pay attention to where the stop and start points are. I want this design to start on one end of the triangle and stop at the other end of the triangle. Right now, both of our start and stop points are at this point. So I'm going to delete this half of the design and then adjust it so that the end point um, comes back to this point here. So I'm going to select these nodes. And then on the edit menu, there's an option for delete. So we can delete all the nodes that we have selected. Now I can zoom in to our endpoints and make adjustments so that this design will start at this point and end at this point. If you select some nodes and zoom in, Pattern CAD will zoom in to the center of the nodes that you have selected. Let's unselect all and let's find our start and our stop point by moving these nodes around. So our end point is right here. We are going to delete it so that it goes to the top of the menu. So we need to select both nodes of the lines that we want to delete. So we can click delete and now they'll disappear and we'll check back and make sure it goes to the right end point. Okay. Next, I want this start point to come right up to the same point it came to before we cut it in half. So that's why we have the layer in the background that we can adjust this image to. Okay. Looks like we have some extra nodes here. We can select them and delete them. And then we can use this bar on the side so that we can move all the way up and zoom in to these nodes. Unselect all. You can see the end point is pretty much where we want it. Let's move it to the center here. Okay. So our triangle is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save this triangle. So you can file, save pattern, file name, use our keyboard and sign for triangle. Click enter and save. Okay. But I also want to make a few more adjustments to this design so that this space and this space are a little more filled in. In order to do that, I want to just make an adjustment to this quarter of the block and then repeat the block so that the adjustments are on both halves. So I'm going to go ahead and select the nodes and delete. And I'm going to zoom in to this area here. Okay. So I'm going to delete a part of this design and then add a little, another hook, a little bit like this hook here but on this side. Okay. So I'm going to select the nodes that I want to delete. I think that looks good. And click Des delete. Then I want to add some splines to this design. So I'm going to come back to draw and click spline. But if I were to draw right now, my endpoints would um, move to this area here. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to use the edit tools 
to insert splines into this space. So I want to insert some splines in between these nodes. So I can select both of the nodes by dragging a box just over those nodes. And if I click insert, a line will appear right here. But since this isn't just a normal line, it is a spline, if we try and move it, you'll see that it bends. In order to control how it bends, you can select both ends of the spline and these two handles appear that you can use to adjust. Okay. So I need one more spline to connect to make that hook. So I'm going to unselect all, select the two nodes I want to insert in between, click insert, and make some adjustments. So now we can look at it without the nodes. Okay. This looks pretty good. So now I just want to repeat this part of the design one more time to make the rest of the triangle. Okay. So we can view our nodes and we can select all. Next, we are going to copy this design, um, move it and rotate it and then move it back in place. Okay. So we can click copy up at the top, move it, we'll find our rotate button, and we need this design to rotate clockwise. So we'll click reverse and click 45, degrees once, 45 degrees twice. And now we can get it close to the right spot and we'll zoom in to make sure we get it just right. And we can turn view of the nodes off. Okay. Okay. Now we need to adjust this endpoint. So let's view our nodes. Go back to select and unselect all. And we'll zoom in to these nodes here. Okay. We want to snap these two endpoints so that they are connected and don't have, we don't have any breaks in this design. So we can select both of these nodes and click snap selected. And now we um, have one continuous line. So let's save this design one more time, and then we can move to our quilt and start quilting this out. I'm going to click File, Save Pattern, and just to make this quick, I'm going to fill in this with the same name as before and just add a space and two. Okay. Now we have two different options for triangles. So now that my design is saved, I can move my design to the tablet I'll be quilting with and I will see you at the frame. Okay, now we're at the frame and I have a quilt loaded onto my frame. I made this quilt top following a pattern that I purchased um, online uh, from an Etsy user, uh, Alexa Quilts. It's a Great design and it has some on point squares and some of these triangles on the edges. 
Okay. So I can, it's perfect for using the on point design and triangle design that I made using the block that I purchased. So I have my machine ready for automation and I have QCT um, loaded up. We're just going to use select and sew. Okay. Select, select and sew. Okay. And we can set our safe area. I want to give our, give us as much room as possible. So we'll go off our quilt. In the bottom right. Okay. Now we need to find our pattern. I will go into uh, patterns. We saved it in batch. Enzyme four. Let's start with our on point design. Okay, so now we need to find the right placement. There is an on point placement option, so we'll use that. I want my design to stretch to the edges, so I've selected stretch. And I want to give a little bit of a margin just so I can make sure the design fits in the square and doesn't go outside the design. So I'll make sure it's locked and I'm gonna hit it smaller two times just so it has a little bit of a margin. Now I can place these four nodes by moving my machine to the cor right corner and tapping corresponding gray nodes. Move it to the top. And it's going to stretch to fill this nice big square. Okay. Looks good. I will click quilt. can see my starting point is green there. So I will move it down here, pull up my bobbin and click sew. And now I'm going to place my triangle design. So we can click finished to return to pattern placement. And I am going to select pattern and find triangle two. I'm going to choose the triangle option. And our triangle design is a 45 degree triangle. So we're gonna switch it from the 60 degree triangle to a 45 degree triangle. You can see it fits much better there. Okay. Make sure this stretches to the edges, but I'm going to add margins again. So make sure it's locked and hit it a couple of times to get that margin. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that um, this quilts in and matches the same direction as um, my pattern down here. So I'm going to make sure that this bottom swirl um, hits this same corner over here. Okay. So I'm going to come over here and tap this corner then go over to the right and place this one. It looks wonky now, but we'll place this last node, gray node, and that looks good. And it looks like it will match 
my on point design. So I will hit quilt and it looks like my start point is over in this direction. So I'll move my sheen right there. Use the single stitch to pull up my bobbin thread. Okay, now I can tap sew and let this quilt out. In the meantime, thanks everybody for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time here at The Grace Company. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved um, reading all of your comments and I love seeing um, everyone who has, uh, has QCT and I hope you're all inspired to try some of the amazing features that QCT has. There, I know there's a lot of options and sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, but if you try it out, there um, is so many options to make your designs your own. Um, as you can see, I finished the quilt. Um, just a reminder, I got the pattern um, for the actual quilt from uh, an Etsy on an Etsy store called Alexis Quilts. And then the design that I was using, um, Joe had a question whether it was um, something from QCT or where I got it from. I got this from Ann Bright Designs. Um, and but even though I bought the design, I was able to make some adjustments with Pattern CAD. And there are so many options in QCT and with Pattern CAD and Quilt CAD to make slight adjustments to it to really make your quilts your own. Even though you're using automation and you're not doing free motion, you still have plenty of options for um, being creative and making these um, quilts your own. Uh, so I want to thank you all again for watching uh, and a reminder that tomorrow we are going to have an event at the, a new show that we are previewing. Um, so tomorrow at 11 Mountain uh, Daylight Time, Nathan will be on uh, introducing a new show, uh, the Grace Co. Shopping Show. So you can watch that. Nathan always has great deals and for you guys and he's going to be introducing the new show the grace co shopping show uh, thank you all for watching and i will see you guys next time